The forgotten war between Japan and Russia in 1939 changed history forever. The year 1939 marked the last of a series of border conflicts initiated in 1932 between the Japanese Empire and the Soviet Union, commonly known as the Soviet-Japanese Border Wars. This undeclared and almost secret war was very bloody, and the Soviet victory would be crucial for the subsequent outcome of World War II. Had this conflict not occurred, Germany would likely have won the war against Russia in 1941. In 1941, Japan was debating whether to attack the United States or the USSR, as it was not feasible to open two fronts simultaneously. The defeat in 1939 against the Soviets heavily influenced Japan's decision to attack Pearl Harbor and not the USSR, thus pushing the United States into the global conflict. Many analysts believe that this decision sealed the Allied victory in the global conflagration started by Germany. The same year Japan attacked the USSR instead of the United States, the Japanese might have defeated the Soviets, facilitating the Third Reich's dominance in Europe. Let's explore the almost forgotten war between the Japanese Empire and the Soviet Union in the years leading up to World War II and its significant consequences for humanity. Before diving in, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and activate notifications to stay updated with our latest content. Asterisk Asterisk An Undeclared War with Up to a Thousand Casualties The 1939 confrontation between the USSR and Japan, also known as the Battle of Kalkin Gol or the Nomanhan Incident, began when Mongolian cavalry units, comprising about 80 men, entered disputed territory with their horses in search of forage. They encountered Manchukuo cavalry forces, a puppet state of Japan, who expelled them from the area. Two days later, Mongolian troops re-entered and could not be expelled. According to Soviet Foreign Minister Gichislav Molotov, in a meeting with the Japanese ambassador in Moscow, it was the Japanese and Manchukuan troops who had attacked the Mongolians near Nomanhan, even using aviation. The fighting continued until the Red Army expelled the Japanese towards Manchukuo, with the famous Soviet general Georgi Zhukov achieving his first major victory in September 1939. The brutal war of 1939 between the Japanese and Soviets resulted in 30,000 to 50,000 casualties, including both dead and wounded, almost half of the soldiers who fought. The outcome of the conflict in favor of the Soviet Union influenced key decision-making in Tokyo and Moscow in 1941, shaping the future outcome of World War II. Russia's Revenge in 1945 On August 6, 1945, the United States dropped an atomic bomb on the Japanese city of Hiroshima, and the next day, the Soviet Union declared war on a Japan shocked and bewildered by the nuclear attack, the first in the history of war. The USSR invaded Japan reclaimed the Soviet territories occupied by the Japanese Empire, and with the support of the People's Republic of Mongolia Army, overthrew the series of puppets controlled by the Japanese in Manchuria, Inner Mongolia, Northern Korea, the Kuril Islands, and Sakhalin Island. The Soviet victory in Canton led to the surrender of the Imperial Japanese Army and the end of World War II. The second U.S. atomic bomb in Nagasaki and the onset of war against the USSR were the main reasons that induced Japan to surrender unconditionally, as it became evident that Stalin would not play a mediating role for a conditional surrender. This war, the last gasp of the global conflict, caused more than 30,000 deaths on both sides. Soviet Atrocities the Soviet invasion and occupation of Manchukuo in 1945 marked the beginning of a traumatic period for the over one million ethnic Japanese residents of the former Japanese puppet state. The Japanese settlers in Manchuria suddenly became stateless, while the non-Japanese Manchurians wanted to get rid of these foreigners as quickly as possible. Many of these residents were killed or ended up in Soviet camps in Siberia, where they served sentences for up to 20 years. Some Japanese in Manchuria managed to escape to the Japanese islands, where they were also treated with hostility as if they were foreigners. The USSR subjected Manchuria to a purge operation to eliminate any possibility of political or military resistance. With Soviet support for the spread of communism, Manchuria became the main base of operations for Mao Zedong's Chinese army, victorious in the Chinese civil war that lasted four years. The communist Chinese military successes in Manchuria and China led the Soviet Union to renounce its rights to bases in China promised by the Western Allies. Before withdrawing from Manchuria, 
the Soviets dismantled everything fordable from the powerful industry built by the Japanese in the region and relocated it to Soviet territory. The impressive industrialization of the Soviet Union from 1929 to 1941 asterisk asterisk. Between 1929 and 1941, the Soviet Union, under the iron-fisted leadership of Joseph Stalin, underwent a significant industrialization process to reduce its lag behind the main developed capitalist countries. The aim was to transform a predominantly agrarian state into an industrial one within the framework of a radical reorganization of society, collectivization of agriculture and cultural revolution, industrialization, and economic centralization. These principles were established in the first five-year plan for the national economy formulated in 1928. The main links of the industrialization plan were the metallurgical industry, mechanical engineering, and heavy equipment construction. This transformation was praised by Soviet propaganda as a feat that achieved notable accomplishments, such as quadrupling the size of heavy industry, allowing the USSR to reduce dependence on capitalist rivals and strengthen its defense capability during World War II. The Soviet industrialization achieved in the 12 years prior enabled the USSR to successfully face the powerful war machine of Nazi Germany on the Eastern Front, with the help of its capitalist allies, especially the United States. The development of the Soviet military-industrial complex and the Great Patriotic War Defense was always of primary concern for the leaders of the Soviet state. From its beginnings, the Bolshevik Revolution of October 1917, Lenin withdrew the USSR from World War I amid fears of a German offensive against the Soviets on the Eastern Front, and the Russian Civil War broke out. This internal war, which pitted the Red Army against the military sectors supporting the return of Tsarism, grouped under the name White Movement, ended with the Communist victory in 1923. However, the Red Army was left very weakened, and despite World War I ending in 1918 with the defeat of Germany, the Ottoman Empire, and Austria-Hungary, there remained in the USSR the concern that militarily they were at a clear disadvantage in another potential conflict. Additionally, with communism in the process of implementation and the legacy of the Civil War experience, the siege mentality and perception of constant threat from the Western capitalist world led by the United States and the United Kingdom developed in the USSR. This led the USSR to develop a powerful military complex as part of the general industrialization process, leading to the production of large quantities of machine guns, armored vehicles, artillery pieces, aircraft, and ammunition that would be vital for victory in the Great Patriotic War, as the Russians call World War II. Background from 1935 to 1937 and the Battle of Lake Kassan. The first serious confrontation of the Soviet-Japanese border wars occurred in 1935 with the Jam Miao incident when the Mongolian People's Army, subordinated to the USSR, reached a Buddhist temple near Lake Beer on the border between Mongolia and the newly established Japanese puppet state of Manchukuo. The Manchukuo forces suffered several casualties, including a Japanese military advisor, and the Mongolians withdrew without losses. When Japan sent an army to regain control in March 1936, Mongolia, with Soviet support, launched a major attack that left about 30 casualties in the Manchukuo forces, who were expelled from the region. In 1937, fighting continued at various border points, and incidents multiplied. In 1938, the USSR retook the Lake Kassan region, at the border between Russia, China, and North Korea, then controlled by Japan, in a bloody battle that cost nearly 2,000 casualties and marked a new limit in the escalation of hostilities that would reach its peak in 1939 at Kalkin Gol. Zhukov's Victory and Consequences the 1939 Battle of Kalkin Gol was the first major victory for Soviet Marshal Georgi Zhukov. After six months of conflict with Japan, the USSR launched a major offensive involving over 50,000 soldiers with heavy artillery, armored vehicles, and aviation support. The victory at Kalkin Gol was total for the Soviets and was decisive for the Soviet Union and World War II, as it dissuaded Japan from attacking the USSR in 1941 when the Japanese made the crucial decision to attack the United States and its naval base at Pearl Harbor in the Pacific. Stalin, the World War, and the Change of Alliances Japan's defeat in the 1939 Battle of Kalkin Gol and the peace agreement with Japan led Stalin to sign the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact of Non-Aggression with Nazi Germany in August 1939. 
This pact allowed the USSR to consolidate its western borders and prepare for a potential conflict with Germany. In 1941, when Hitler broke the pact and invaded the Soviet Union, the USSR joined the Western Allies in the fight against the Axis. Japan, for its part, attacked the United States at Pearl Harbor, prompting the United States to enter the war and the beginning of the Pacific War. Japan's decision not to attack the USSR and focus on the United States was influenced by the defeat at Kalk in Goal and the strategic consequences of that conflict. We invite you to share your opinion on how this hypothetical event could have affected the outcome of the war. Leave us your comments and subscribe for more historical analyses. Thank you for following us to the end. If you are new to our channel, subscribe and follow our social networks in the description. Remember, a people who do not know their history are doomed to repeat it.